Welcome to the Study On Podcast. I'm your host, Angie Bauman, and I am passionate about Bible study. Friend, my journey has not been an easy one. I am a trauma and abuse survivor, and I still walk with a limp. But I also walk in freedom because as I've studied God's word, he has released me from layers of shame and invited me into a life filled with an abundance of his peace, joy, rest, and hope. I'm transformed because I study the Bible, and my heart's desire is to create offerings that help you get and stay in your Bible so you experience that transformation too. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Maybe it's as you enjoy your coffee or with pen and notebook ready, or you're driving to work or walking the dog from wherever you are in your day. Let's dive deep into a verse of scripture together. So we walk steady on. Let's get started. Welcome, friend. Today, we're going to talk about God being our refuge, and we'll be doing that by studying Psalm 46.1 using my step-by-step Bible study method. And step-by-step is an inductive Bible study tool that focuses on one word in one verse of scripture to find life application. If you'd like to study along with me today, you will find links to a study sheet and also the step-by-step masterclass videos. There's two videos in the step-by-step masterclass. It takes about 20 minutes to watch both videos and links for the study sheet and the masterclass videos are in today's show notes. Psalm 46.1 in the NIV says this, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Psalms means praises, songs, or instrumental music. The complete collection of Psalms is 150. It is Israel's book of worship, and there are many authors who write the Psalms, but the author most frequently identified is King David. Psalm 46, where we are studying today, has 11 verses. It is a psalm about having confidence in God's protection and power, and verse 1 is in the section of this psalm that discusses the help of God being greater than any crisis. Isn't that good news? No matter what you are going through today, my friend, God is greater than your crisis, your stuff, your circumstance, your problem, whatever it is, God is greater. And we're going to remember that. And as we study today, we're also going to remember we have a place to go in trouble. All right, we have a place of safety, a place of refuge that we can go in trouble. So Psalm 46, one in the NIV, one more time, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Step one in the Bible study method is to choose our word. Our word today is refuge. The definition of refuge, these two things are really close together, but listen to the difference. It is a state of safety, protection, or shelter, or a place providing safety, protection, or shelter. And so it is a a feeling of being safe. It is also a place where we know that we are safe. And this is saying, the verse is saying, God is that state. God's presence in our lives and connecting to God's presence in our lives provides that state of safety, but also God is our place of safety. He is the place that we can run to when we do not feel safe for whatever reason. Some synonyms for the word refuge are things like sanctuary, retreat, haven, shelter, hideaway. Oh, don't those words just sound deliciously warm and wonderful? Some antonyms are things like danger, peril, trouble, distress, exposure. I thought that was interesting because sometimes we are left exposed to the elements, right? We're vulnerable to the elements. That's another antonym, actually, vulnerability. Um, We're vulnerable to the elements, but when we are vulnerable to the elements like weather elements, um, think about that in a spiritual way or an emotional way, we're also vulnerable to the elements of fear, anxiety, shame, those things, right? And when we are feeling those things, when we are exposed to those elements, where will we run? Where is our place of safety? The final antonym that I have is defensivelessness. And so when we feel that way, when we feel like we're in danger, distress, when we are exposed, do we remember and do we take action to run to that place of safety so that we have a state or a feeling, an understanding that we are indeed safe. 
The storm can rage all around us, but if we have a place to go, a place of safety and shelter, then we will be able to weather or wait out whatever storm that is that's around us. Both of my boys play golf. I think I have mentioned this on the podcast before. Both of my boys play golf. And I remember when my older son, Alex, kind of was first playing golf. And it was one of the first times that I was out on the golf course with him. And I was driving the cart because before the boys were old enough to drive their own cart. Well, Josh still isn't actually, but before they, they were old enough, I was really handy to drive the golf cart and to pack snacks, right? That's what mom needs to do. But I remember uh, being out on the golf course. I do not golf. And I would I saw this little structure. It wasn't exactly like a shed. It wasn't exactly like, um, a, it was kind of like a picnic shelter, but anyway, it didn't really have sides on it, but I could not figure out what that was in the middle of the golf course there. And so when Alex was done with his hit and it was time to move on, whatever, I said, Alex, what is that place up there? And he's like, oh, that's the place that we can go to if a storm pops up. And I thought about having this refuge, this place of safety out on the golf course for my boys, right? Because sometimes you set out and it looks like it's going to be a clear day, but you get a little bit far out there on the golf course, or you get a little bit far out there in our life, whatever, and a place that we thought was safe or a time or a season that we thought was safe, all of a sudden a storm pops up. And do we know where to go when that happens? What is our place of refuge or safety that stops our exposure from the elements? And I'm just going to say this from personal experience. It took me a long time to connect this, but when a life storm pops up, especially for me in a place or season that I didn't expect it, I guess, when do we expect the storms? But sometimes I think we do go into something knowing it can be a little bit more dangerous than others. But when we're not sensing danger, or we didn't know that it was coming. The thing that we are exposed to so quickly are the enemy's lies because the enemy will tell us, will jump up and down, will remind us of things that we've not done well in the past, or he will try to tempt us to doubt God's faithfulness or not believe in the promises because they don't feel true in that moment. And it's so important for us to know when we begin to have that kind of anxiety or doubt or struggle, when we want so much to rely on our own resources, when we want to jump into action and fix the problem, will we pause that chaos in our heart, in our brain, take those thoughts captive, if you will, and will we go to the Lord and rest in him, be renewed in him, allow him to remind us of his promises, allow him to draw us in close to him so that we can have that place of refuge and safety and we can wait out that storm and then make a decision moving forward when we just have our feet back under us a little bit more, right? So anyway, as we travel through this study, I hope you'll keep that refuge on the golf course in mind and ask yourself, what's your refuge on the golf course look like, right? Where do you know you can run when something pops up and how practically does that take shape? What practically does that look like in your life? Okay. Step two is called investigate. We divide that up into four parts. Part one is to compare our word refuge and other Bible translations. I found a few things. All of them are good. The CEV says a mighty fortress. The ERV, protection. The easy translation, strong place. The GNV, hope. The GNT, shelter. The message says safe place to hide. And the NIRV says place of safety. So I just want you to hear this reassurance today. God is our refuge, right? In the NIV, God is our mighty fortress. He is our protection, our strong place, our hope, our shelter. He is our safe place to hide. He is our place of safety. Hear that reminder today. How does that apply to wherever you are today, whatever you're going through? If you need a safe place right now, and who doesn't need a safe place right now from whatever it is that's troubling you, do you know for sure 
that God is that place of acceptance and strength and safety. Okay, part two in the investigate step is to research the original word. The Strong's number is H4268, Makasa, and it means a shelter, literally or figuratively. It means hope, and it means a place of refuge, shelter, and trust. I love that it also means hope because when we are anxious, when the storm is brewing, we need to have a hope that it's not always going to be that way, right? That's what we need. That's what keeps us encouraged. That's what keeps us giving into the lies of the enemy and God's refuge, taking refuge, taking safety, seeking shelter in God brings that hope, infuses us with that hope so that we can stand strong. Our word today, refuge, is from a root word, H2620, that means to flee for protection, figuratively to confide in, to have hope, to make refuge, to put our trust in. So this part actually spurs me to know that this is part action on our part as well, right? God is our refuge. That's God's job. Our job is to take refuge in God's place of safety, right? To flee for protection. When we are feeling the effects of the storm, will we acknowledge that and seek the help that we need? He is our help. He is our strong tower. He is the place that we can confide in, right? He is the place that we have hope in. Will we go to that shelter on the golf course or will we stand out in the elements And just let the storm beat down on us. We have a choice there. What choice will we make? The theological word book of the Old Testament about this word says, This idea of taking refuge may well derive from the common experience of fugitives or of men at war for whom the adjacent hills provided a ready safe height or strong rock to which the often helpless defender could hurry for protection. It was their place to go to, right? When I am in a battle, when I am in danger, when I am under attack, that's where I'm going to run. Can we make a plan? Well, I know we can. Will we make a plan in the days we are not under attack so we know where to go to on the days that we are, right? So if you're in a struggle today and you're in a storm, let me tell you, God is that refuge. If you're not, let me tell you, God is that refuge. And can you keep that in mind today so that we can remember it faster when the storm hits, right? Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I flounder around when a storm hits and I forget and I move to problem solving and I move to self-doubt or trying to use my own resources and all the things that we do. And it takes me oh, too too many hot minutes. It takes me too long to be like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I need to do. I don't need to go into problem solving mode. I actually just need to go to the Lord, let him draw me near, confide in him, put my hope in him, put my trust in him and allow him to show me what the next step is right now. Part three in the investigate step is to read a little bit of commentary. The enduring word says this, Many of the other psalms begin with the description of the psalmist's crisis. In Psalm 46, the poet begins with God's provision. He looked to God for help in difficult times and found it. I love that statement. The psalmist looked for God for help in difficult times. And when he looked for God's help, he found it. Derek Kidner says, refuge gives the defensive or external aspect of salvation, God the unchanging in whom we find shelter. The shelter on the golf course that I was referring to earlier, over time, it will need to be repaired or torn down, built again, you know, all of those things, because it is a worldly shelter that we can seek in an actual physical weather storm, right? And it won't last forever. The elements will tear it down. But God's shelter is not like that. God's shelter does not decay. It does not fall down. It does not fail. It does not change. It is always there for us. It is always present for us. It always provides exactly what it promises to provide. In every storm, in every situation, 
whether we run to it immediately at the first sign of lightning and thunder or whether we stand there getting soaked, yelling at the sky, telling it to stop, being angry, whatever, and it takes hours or days, it is still right there for us and it is the place that we can go to for safety and protection. The commentary critical and explanatory on the whole Bible And just by the way, all the resources that I used to put an episode together are also found in the show notes. But that particular commentary says, literally, this word means a place of trust. So not only is it a place of safety, but it's a place of safety that I put my trust in. I believe this place, I believe in this place, I will be safe. I will be taken care of. And not only that, I will be guided on how to move from where I am to the next place I need to be. The Bible Knowledge Commentary says, the psalmist declared that God is the refuge and strength of believers. In other words, they find safety and courage, I like that word, by trusting in him. We find safety and courage by trusting in him who is always present to help them in their troubles. So the saints need not fear, even if many perils come against them. No matter what happens, Those trusting in him are safe. No matter what happens, my friend, those who trust in the Lord are safe. Willem S. Prinsloo says the central theme of Psalm 46 is unconditional trust in God, no matter what should happen. God is always asking us in our life circumstances, do you trust me? I hear him saying that all the time when I go to him with this problem or this concern, or when I don't go to him, (laughs) I hear this little whisper in my heart, right? Angie, Angie, do you trust me? Like, I know we've never been exactly here before, right? Whatever you're facing, it feels scary because you've never faced this exact same thing before, but you have faced so many other things before. And my consistency in your life, God's consistency in my life is unchangeable. So as I was this God in a previous crisis, circumstance, circumstance, grief, whatever. I am that God. I am that available place of safety in whatever is going on in your heart, in your life today. Part four of the investigate step is to rewrite the verse in our own words. And here it is again from the NIV, Psalm 46, one, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. And here's how I rewrote the verse. When I place my trust in God, I am safe, even if things around me are scary and feel out of control. God is always near. Step three in the Bible study method is to find the characteristics of God. And I wrote down refuge, obviously. He is my place of safety. And I can flee to him for protection. Remember that from earlier? I can flee to him for protection when I am afraid. I also wrote down that he is merciful because sometimes the disorder is of my own doing, right? Sometimes a storm just hits. We were out playing golf. It was a beautiful day. We didn't see, we didn't see the skies getting darker. And all of a sudden it is raining, thundering, lightning, and we didn't have anything to do with it, right? But sometimes there's a storm in our life because of something we did. It's our own doing. It's raining because we caused it to rain. And yet still he opens the door and says, he like flings the door open wide and says, hurry in here, child, right? Come in, come in, come in, come in, come out of that storm and come into your place of safety. So whether we have something to do with the storm or not does not change the availability to run to God for refuge. I love that about him so much. Step four in the method is to identify the lie of the enemy. And this is where we just try to find in our hearts, maybe what is the thing that makes this difficult to do, to obey, to understand, to act out. And here's what I put a lie of the enemy in this is for me. And if you ever have a hard time identifying the lie, underneath all the lies of the enemy are be afraid. It's hard to sometimes ask ourselves or to acknowledge, admit what we are afraid of. But if we can do that, then we can identify, understand, and speak truth to the lie that we are struggling to not believe or that we are tempted to believe, right? So here's the lie for this one for me. Your shelter in the rocks is too far away. You'll never make it in time. 
you might as well weather the storm in a refuge different than the one he offers. Like you can't make it. I can't get to God. It's just too far away. I can't reach it. I can't make it. And I need to do something else to find refuge because I can't get to God. And here's the truth in that. As we speak to that lie, he is too far away for me to get to him. But here's the thing. I don't have to get to him. He's always near to me. So it's not like on the golf course, if the refuge is on hole one, I'm making something up now, right? And you're on hole nine and you're like, shoot, I have a long way to go to get to the refuge. I mean, that can that can happen in, in you know, actual physical refuge places, right? Where we are, where we actually have to figure out how to get there. Um, but that's not true with God because God is as near as our calling to him to be with us. As soon as we say, Lord, I need you. And I'm going to tell you something right here. If you're in a crisis, if the anxiety is swirling, anything like that, if you speak the name of Jesus, there is such power in the name of Jesus. And as the anxiety is welling and brewing and swirling and you're doubting and you're scared and all of those things that are happening, if you will just say, Jesus, Jesus. That will center you. Oh, it does so, it does so fast for me. It will center you and it will remind you that that place of refuge that you so desperately need is right where you are. God is so good to us that way. Step five in the method is called So What? And this is where we just make note of a key takeaway. And mine today is if I'm scared by circumstances inside or outside, I can check my trust level. When I remember to place my trust and security in God, I will be in my place of safety. I would love to hear your takeaway. I hope you'll email me. You can do so anytime at steadyonpodcast at gmail.com. If you have not yet, I would be so grateful if you would subscribe to the podcast on whatever directory you use to listen. It only takes a second and it guarantees you will receive every episode. And if someone came to mind as you were listening today, maybe you have a friend who needs to know they have a refuge. I would love it if you would share this episode with them. Inviting them into what we're doing here is another great way to support the show. Thank you again for listening. I pray wherever your day takes you, you are walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.